Hello everyone. Today's lecture is dedicated to Biographia Literaria by S. T. Coleridge. So, friends, written in 1817, it is a significant semi-autobiographical critical piece of Coleridge that incorporates his opinions on society, politics, human behavior, and literature as well. Initially, it was intended to be a preface for his poetry collection, Sibylin Leaves. Friends, the influence of German philosophers like Kant, Schlegel, Schelling, Hegel, and Hardenberg cannot be overlooked on the philosophy of Coleridge. Moreover, a short section of this critical piece is a response to Wordsworth's theory of poetry. So, friends, this work of Coleridge is popularly known for coining the phrase. suspension of disbelief or willing suspension of disbelief which refers to a deliberate effort of a reader to suspend his rational and logical judgment about the mysterious and supernatural events of a poem about the structure of this work we can say that it is lengthy and loosely connected let's begin with the main discourse of this work which is obviously dedicated to fancy and imagination friends fancy and imagination had been used synonymously by the augustan poets but coleridge distinguished fancy from imagination as an inferior faculty of mind it is creative though but like imagination it cannot bring an amalgam of diverse images together it rather presents different images in different shapes friends remember that fancy cannot blend them or bring them together another fact is that fancy is a mechanical power that deals with external objects in a mechanical way in this way fancy is different from imagination because imagination draws images in a spontaneous way friends you might have studied ode to a nightingale by john keats In this poem, Nightingale has been delineated as something more than a bird. The charm of this beautiful melodious bird has been glorified by the poet. So this glorification of Nightingale has been done by our poet by using his secondary imagination. On the other side, fancy does not modify the original object. It rather associates the original image with other images. Let's talk about imagination in detail now. So friends according to Coleridge all creative activity is an act of imagination. Coleridge finds two forms of imagination primary imagination and secondary imagination. Friends the first important fact about these two imaginations is that there is no basic difference between them. they only differ in terms of degrees primary imagination is universal and it is common to all coleridge calls it the living power and prime agent of all living perception it simply means that primary imagination exists in all humans so friends we all share primary imagination certainly all those things that we come across leave their particular images and perceptions in our minds this is primary imagination friends on the other side secondary imagination is exceptional or it is particular it is advanced imagination which artists like painters and poets possess it blends different images together like to make his painting beautiful an artist follows a process of inclusion and elimination for instance a painting is more beautiful than a photograph because the painter includes beautiful ideas and paints to enhance its appeal and he excludes or eliminates the uglier and disturbing aspects of it apart from it primary imagination is instant like you look at something 
and your mind captures its image but secondary imagination is not so immediate like a poet captures a glimpse of some beautiful garden which he observes sincerely and tries to recall it frequently before he composes a poem on it another important difference between primary and secondary imagination is that primary imagination is natural or spontaneous while secondary imagination is gifted it is intentional and deliberate gifted because we all do not share secondary imagination a few people are blessed by it so friends remember one thing that secondary imagination always relies upon the primary one it means primary imagination acts as a raw material for the creation of the secondary imagination coleridge calls it shaping and modifying power because it changes molds or modifies the original object friends i hope this lecture will help you to understand the opinions of coleridge on fancy and imagination to receive further updates of our videos do subscribe to our channel and hit a like if you like this video